That's what we're going to look at tonight. I want to read to you a little bit from history because I want to encourage you to be mining for gold as you read the Bible. I'm going to show you how. Uh, gold was found, as you know, here in America at the head of a place called the Six Mile Canyon in the territory of Nevada in 1859. Two miners named McLaughlin and O'Reilly found the gold mine. And they staked their claim and they went off and got drunk. And while they were drunk, another fella uh, came along and he, by the name of Comstock, claimed their claim and told them he really found it. And they were so drunk with the gold that they had found and bought their alcohol that they believed him and gave Comstock a place in history. Well, he followed the gold, but there wasn't very much gold there. And he followed it all the way up the canyon, just mining along. And all the time that he was mining for gold, he kept complaining in town that his shovel was covered with sticky blue-gray mud. And he said, it clings to everything. He says, it's on my boots. He says, and they're so heavy. He says, it coats my shovel, my pick. He says, my mules are caked with this stuff. He says, why don't you test it and see why it's so heavy? And they tested it. It was nearly pure gold, worth $2,000 a ton. Every shovel full was worth 10 bucks minimum. In their day, which would be hundreds of dollars in our day. We're talking about in the 1850s. And so thus became the great, great Comstock load. And that's where the Crocker National Bank, the Hearst fortune, and many other great family fortunes began. Well, you say, what is that? Well, if you think it would be exciting, I think it would be exciting, but if you think it would be exciting to stick a shovel in the ground and have uh, $20 or $50 worth of stuff stick to it, and every shovelful you make 20, 30, 40 bucks, don't you think we'd all get a shovel and go digging? I would. Wouldn't you? Well, did you know, every time you put your shovel down in the Gospels, you can hit gold. That's more valuable than silver. How do you put your shovel down? Well, I'll just share four ideas. The first one is we should read the Bible repeatedly. I was challenged as a young uh, high school, I was a senior in high school, I was challenged to begin to read the Bible through repeatedly. And I was challenged that, and I've never stopped for 25 years. In fact, uh, on April 1st, I started the 88th time I've read the New Testament and the 63rd time I've read the Old Testament on April 1st. And, and that's because someone challenged me. They said, you can read the Bible repeatedly if you just read it through every three or four months or five months or six months. So, so I always have. You know what I like? A.T. Pearson, the great uh, Bible commentary, commentator, once said, I never saw that. He was talking about something in the scriptures until I read it the hundredth time. Most of the great Bible teachers of the past didn't rely on commentaries and computers. They relied on constant, repeated readings. G. Campbell Morgan would never open his mouth on a text of scripture until he had personally read it in excess of 40 times. Jonathan Goforth, 70 times. George Mueller, 200 times he read the passage through. Martin Luther had the whole New Testament memorized. We could go on and on. That's the caliber of what gold mining does to you. Read the Bible repeatedly. That's how you strike gold. Don't, don't, don't get, get worn out if you don't understand it the first time. Uh, there are many times. I mean, right now, I'm reading some parts for the 88th time, and I still am saying, Lord, would you explain more fully what that means? It's, and, and what it is is there's a richness every time. It's kind of like uh, an endless supply of, of uh, treasure, and it just keeps coming out. Secondly, read the Bible patiently. Uh, that's waiting on the, the Lord. Psalm 119, verse 18 says, open my eyes. And, and the Lord says that the increase of, of the Lord's uh, enlightening will will bring us understanding so we have to patiently wait for him read the bible selectively in other words uh looking at who and what and where and things like that and it's so important uh today i'm reading right now where i am is in joshua or finished joshua when i'm in judges but i was looking at the importance of the city of shechem that's where the first altar to god was built in the promised land by Abraham. And 
and Abraham started the worship of God in the promised land there, and Jacob came back, and Joshua built altars there, and God thinks a lot of that city of Shechem. And that's where uh, on both sides are little mountains, Ebal and Gerizim, and they put all three million of the Israelites up there when they got in the promised land and put six tribes on Mount Ebal and six tribes on Mount Gerizim, and they put the altar right in the middle of it at Shechem, and they had the six tribes on Mount Ebal read the curses of chapter 27. If you ever want to read some bad stuff, read the curses in... in um, the 27th chapter of Deuteronomy about everything God would do to them if they didn't obey. And then he had them in Mount Gerizim read the promises of blessing. And you know what? Every one of the curses has happened. Last summer, Jim Kessler and I were sitting in an underground restaurant in Warsaw in the old town. And we looked around, and they told us that that restaurant had been the last resort for the Jews in the ghetto of Warsaw. And they had come down and hidden as the Nazis closed in, and the Nazis burned that 500-year-old building over the top of them and cremated them in that building. And they had rebuilt the building to look 500 years old, and we were eerily looking around at it and thought, the, the curse of God on the disobedience of the Jews, there were cremated bodies in that building because they rejected their God. That's what reading the Bible selectively, you can pick out some incredible truths that are very sobering and some are very blessed. Also, read the Bible imaginatively. I mean, when I read about Ebal and Gerizim, Ebal, even to this day, is bald. You know, it just doesn't have trees on it, and Gerizim does. And so you can see the curse, it's bald, and it, nothing's growing on it. And you can see the fruitfulness of the other mountain, and you just read it imaginatively. And I can hear a million and a half on this side saying, cursed are you if you do this. And I can hear a million and a half voices saying, and blessed are you if you do this. Read the Bible imaginatively. It will uh, help you find gold.